generally a little something about each of the characters. Uh, the witch, I think, works best when she's played scary. If, it's, if she's not a frightening or scary presence on stage, I think a certain amount of the tension um, is taken out of, out of the show. So my only advice about the witch, I think there are several ways to play her, but we have to, have to uh, as an audience, believe that the people on stage are really scared of her, that she does hold powers uh, that can affect the course of their lives, and, and that's her force and, and her act within her action within the act. Um, Cinderella is probably the toughest character to portray simply because it's such a familiar character and we have sort of predisposed notions about who Cinderella is. Um, I took as a kind of cue the, the, the notion that Cinderella talks to birds. Um, I don't know anyone that talks to birds, but um, so my assumption would be that she's a little out of the ordinary. Um, and I think to, to take her in that realm is important. She's maybe a little spaced out or a little ditzy or lost in her own world, but she is not, um, she d is not your apple pie kind of personality. I think the other thing about Cinderella we tried to play with is that she's not just good. I mean, it's boring to be just good. So I think there's a little bit of repression on in that character. And um, right at the beginning, we see her pull too hard on the Cinderella, on her stepsister's hair. Um, I think that she's, you've got to give her a life, you've got to make her a real person. It doesn't mean that she's not a good person, but she's not just a good person. Jack is, to my thinking, very much the dreamer. Um, he, I don't think of him as being as dumb as everyone thinks he is, but more uh, uh, just in his own world, a sort of creative mind, if you will. And his mother is a personality who very much wants to keep Jack a child because it gives her a purpose to be a mother. I think if this woman didn't have her son around, she wouldn't know what to do. And so her possessiveness, in a way, is very much, uh, very much just determined the personality of Jack. Uh, Rapunzel is basically a kid who's been locked up in a tower for 17 years, which pretty much dictates her personality. Uh, this, uh, I think, neuroses, any kind of neuroses you can bring through with her was, is, is basically fun and right. Um, the baker and the wife are the outsiders to the action. They're the sort of, I always thought, people from Brooklyn who sort of drifted into the woods. Um, they're not prepared for this world. They don't know about this world. And uh, they serve almost as a um, uh, stand-in for us, the audience, whatever, if we were to suddenly find ourselves in an enchanted kingdom where uh, people live in towers and there are witches running around. So in a sense, I, I, I see them as being um, the least extraordinary, in a sense, of the group because they are the most uh, they're sort of caught in the circumstances of what surrounds them, and that should be kind of the basis of the humor of them in the show. Uh, the princes you can go uh, any number of different ways with, but uh, I mean, in a sense, they're pampered and they're spoiled. And um, but again, I wouldn't make them an easy target. Try to find their their humanity too, particularly Cinderella's prince in the second act. The mysterious man seems to basically be uh, a mysterious man, basically a father, and uh, he. He's not all that well drawn in the sense of a character, but he stands in for that that kind of parent that we have that we don't know uh, and that we always wish to touch base with. Uh, as I said about the witch earlier, in a sense, she's a bag lady. She's someone you don't want as a neighbor. Uh, she's a loose cannon. She's got to be somebody uh, that you are frightened of because you never know what they're going to do next. Uh, little Red Riding Hood is essentially a sort of wide-eyed innocent until she meets the wolf and uh, sort of transformed into a street smart kid, um, uh, bearing her emotions perhaps a little bit uh, and using her knife for protection. But she makes a nice transformation to the end of the show. And I, I think you should look at all the characters and see what you can find for them in terms of a kind of transformation from Act 1 to the end of Act 2. Uh, the parents, uh, often in fairy tales, you find that there are, uh, usually is just one parent and often more mothers than fathers. Um, but again, I think these particular um, uh, stories that we chose, the parents tend to be distant. Uh, again, uh, for instance, the stepsisters and Cinderella's mom, I would try and go against the obvious, which is to make them the wicked stepmother, the wicked stepsisters. Um, I think it's more interesting if they become kind of grand or beautiful or whatever, and that their uh, the nature of their their uh, meanness towards Cinderella is not the obvious fairy tale kind, but uh, more familiar kind of chilly, cold, um, unloving, as opposed to you know bitchy. Um, 
the narrator is a, is, is a curious um, uh, character for you to play with. We, we had thought of a lot of different ideas. We wanted to cast uh, Walter Cronkite as the narrator. Uh, you could cast a politician, a newscaster. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actor. Uh, for a while, Dick Cavett played the role on Broadway. Um, the English uh, production has cast uh, the uh, English equivalent of Bob Barker uh, uh, as the narrator. You can have some fun with that, or you can play him very professorial, um, a la Bettelheim or Jung. You could play him uh, as a father figure, Burl Ives, any way you want. Uh, the most important thing is that, that you choose someone that, A, we want to listen to, that is a good storyteller, someone that um, we want to entrust our future to. It, it will only work if this is a sense that we have as an audience and that the characters have that this is a person who has the power to tell the story and know the ending so that when he is plucked from the proceedings, as it were, um, chaos can ensue.